Hello everybody, welcome back to Lono Farms, a beautiful map created by Bullet Bill. This is Farming Simulator 17. This is a, a map that is based on a real life farm that I was privileged to work on in my growing up years and it's owned by my family <clears throat> who work it to, to continue to this day. Oh, it looks like our combine's having trouble. And I am pleased to share a, a series on this, to share some of my own experiences and stories from working on this farm. So thank you for, for coming along and sharing a little time with me. Uh, it's nice of you to do that. <clears throat> As we've seen in some previous episodes, our little combine seems to have some difficulty making this corner up here. <clears throat> I'm kind of curious, will he continue going? Wow. Wow, that just looks a long, long ways ahead. He will continue going, so... Yeah, I tried to be cute by having some little ends here, but um, all I did was create a problem that I have to manually deal with instead of letting my combine do all the work for me. We're in the middle of wheat harvest, and as I've mentioned in some other videos, uh, it's an upper area common that uh, Lone Oak grows wheat. They do on occasion over the years. It all depends on the economics of a particular year. And so there was a previous episode where I shared pictures of what I believe was the last time that they had wheat in this particular field, you know, just below the Lone Oak tree. But now, and I think for the past uh, nearly 20 years, it's been grassy every year, and I anticipate it'll be grassy into the future. Although one never knows, you know, with the war going on in Ukraine, as, as I record this, uh, I know that's a significant wheat growing region. It has had an impact on prices, shoot, it's had an impact on everything prices, fuel, and fertilizer. Uh, just one of those things that happens in war whether it's intended or not so wow look at what it does to my header you know this is a dandy little mod but i sure wish i knew how to fix how this header attaches here it just kind of gets a little discombobbled i'm not sure why as soon as i crank it on it's gonna snap it into place i really don't know why but it is what it is you're almost done with this uh, little section here, and we're going to get him harvesting the rest of the field, and we'll go look at a few more pictures, as has been our want in these episodes. I take all of that in one bite. I think I did it. Good to the last bite. Lay down our straw and head up to head up the hill a bit. Where this continues. Yeah, there's a couple times a combine snuck past me and it just goobered the field. But such as life, it'll figure it out. I'm pretty confident. We have rain on the way. I don't know how far away it is. At I think I need to activate a mod in here I've used before, which tells me the exact amount of time that we have in hours, minutes, and seconds until the rain hits. Evidently, I don't have it in here. Maybe in another session I'll need to add it before recording. Um, I can try to do that at some point. Let me hop out of here like we did last time. I want to look at... Um, this here is, this isn't on Lone Oak. You know, when, I think in the first or second video that I made on this series, when I, I was explaining kind of how the map was made, you know, Bullet Bill did all the work on that, and the, the little part that I provided or tried to help him with was reference pictures. And so this one here, kind of on a whim, this particular area where I'm standing is north and west of Lone Oak Farms, probably eight miles as a crow flies, give or take. It's a little further down in the valley. 
this is the local equipment dealership that uh, Lone Oak uses. It's called Pape. They have a number of dealerships through the valley. And so one day on a whim, I happened to be driving through this area. I thought, well, why not take a couple pictures of it and give it as a reference to Bullet Bill. Uh, he ended up going a different direction for the equipment dealership that is used in uh, in the map, which is fine. But, I mean, it's, this is just part of the hundreds, and I think it was over a 1,000 pictures I ended up sending him, and these were kind of among them. It's kind of set up as a be-all, end-all type of, of dealership. You can see the little tiny uh, lawnmower over here. They have that all the way up to the largest combines you can imagine that they service out of here for local farmers. It, the dealership used to be actually clear over in West Salem, which took a significant significantly longer period of time of to go over there to get parts and whatnot so I know my uncles were thankful kind of when they moved onto this side of the valley so there's one angle this is kind of around the other side around the front some of their smaller tractors um, just kind of some pictures of the dealership and the good old flag flying out front I've been there myself a number of times on part runs or or going there uh, for my father with some of his tractors that he has and, and even for my own self, you know, with the, the lawnmower that we have just to get parts and, and whatnot. Plus, they got toys in there for kids. Like I say, they, they have be all end all. Anything to get your, your family hooked on John Deere, they'll sell it to you. Just another picture in the door what an American, at least Oregon, uh, equipment dealership looks like. Looks like some other fellow was out uh, wandering the roads. This picture isn't very good, taken through my windshield. But I at least avoided hitting that guy walking on the road, so I'll call that a success. Another one, I must have just passed him. Kind of on the area, some wind rowers there that you see, and... And like so many dealerships, their their main paint color is green, but if a farmer comes to them and wants to trade in a different color that they have, well, they'll accept it. And I don't know what all they do with it when they get it in there. It looks like that's a McDon. Is that what it says? Yeah, that looks like a McDon windrower. Oh, yeah, sure enough, there it is. Right on the header. And, yeah, so you see some red paint, even blue paint here with the chaser bin. Um, oh, and even a four-wheel drive. Is um, that a case tractor over there? Can't really tell. Yeah, it looks like a case, case international. So, an American dealership. Looks like I double passed or came down the other way. I may have taken some more pictures later. I'm sure they just love people driving by slowly taking pictures. Probably creeps them out. <laughs> so, oh, it looks like it all. They also do Honda and some chainsaw stuff there with the still. Anyway, just wanted to share a few of those pictures. I, I Like I say, I have no idea who all looks at this. If there's anybody in the Midwest, maybe maybe this dealership looks similar to what you all have. Maybe not. If you uh, are in Europe or UK, maybe it's similar. Maybe it's different. Whatever it was, I just wanted to provide a, a reference to to uh, Bullet Bill. You know, what he ended up with for a dealership, which he put up here. Just a perfect place to put this. I'll repeat again, in real life, this is just a bare, empty lot. There's scrub brush, and that's pretty much about it. This is kind of how he designed it, which is pretty cool, too. So that was how he opted to set it up, and he made it set up for Case IH equipment versus John Deere. Perfectly fine. That's where he ended up. Let's maybe... I wonder, could I get around? I don't know if I need to get him out of the way. Let's just for kicks and giggles. Actually, you know what? Hold on a sec. I am gonna make use of my little mod here that I never released. Right control A to adjust the width. And now let's increase it just slightly. So you can see it here. It's a control plus. Um, hmm. Oh, it's right control. Excuse me. 
There we go. We'll make it just slightly wider. I guess I like doing this because of my OCD to make sure I get every particle out of the field. I don't want to make it egregiously so. I just don't like it when there are bits that remain. So now we'll turn them loose. And as you can see, it's taking a little bit wider than what is typical. Just ignore that, of course. Nothing to see here. Yeah, see, it probably would miss this stuff right here if we didn't do that kind of around that corner, the way it swings. Uh, this corner also here. Oh, I hear those birds. It makes me think of Kim G who probably has no idea how many times his name has been mentioned in here. I think I've mentioned before, my own personal home is probably seven miles, give or take a little, pretty much due west and a little south of, uh, of Lone Oak Farms. And just yesterday and today, you know, I was reminded of this, you know, this very field operation I'm doing here of windrowing the straw. There's, uh, I'm surrounded, oh, we're an autosave. Uh, well, not totally surrounded, but I live next to a grass seed field and a pasture and some other things, but I get to regularly see grass seed farming take place. It's a real blessing to me, even though they dust off my house and make a big old dirt and mess and everything, I don't care. I'm seeing agriculture and that's why I enjoy living in the country. But this is very recent, just watching it. I have a nephew that works for a, a farm crew, a contractor, if you will, that goes around to help other farmers, you know, where they windrow up their grass windrows. And then I think he's on the baling crew. And I just watched it this afternoon. And Maybe I had to show some of the, that footage. I'll need to maybe figure out how to edit it into this video. So maybe I need to quit it before it gets totally to the half hour mark. Look at that. I picked up every bit clear into the corner. That's why I like going just a little bit wider so I don't have to come back and clean up the corner bits. <laughs> but yeah, so maybe I'll, I'll try to put some of that footage. I just got it on my cell phone. It's amazing to me how fast those guys work. You know, in the old days when we didn't have big balers or massive windrowers or, yeah, just any of that, and it was all small bales handled by hand a lot of times. Uh, maybe, uh, you know, I guess Lone Oak had a, what, what you call a bale accumulator. So it would take uh, bales and... Oh no, what's going on with the combine? Alright, you know what? I'm going to park him here. That's far enough. Um. <laughs> Oops, I was on the right vehicle as it was. Yeah, it just wasn't quite close enough to allow him to turn. It's going to kill. Most of the time, this does pretty well. There are moments. Maybe we need to adjust that in the settings here. I need to put it just a little closer. It seems like before we had it step out a little bit. I think that'll force it to be slightly closer. A tenth of a meter. We'll see if the back end. And the combine, I think we noticed it turned the corner. So it knows that the rest of this is done. Somehow it knows that looking ahead because it turned the corner all on its own. So yeah, I'm still a little puzzled as to how the lands work. Um, or as to how they could work. But oh well, at least we're combining and have it, have it go. Let me step out and just show a few more pictures, if that's alright with all of you. And of course you can't say anything, so I'm just going to assume it's alright. Uh, let's move back. Oh, and of course my weak computer decided to bleep out 
my picture view. Oh wait, oh I turned it off. Actually, you know what? This one's appropriate. I can't remember if I've shown this one before or not. In uh, actually, I want this one here. This particular field doesn't show on the Lone Oak map. It, uh, if it did, I mean, it's way off to the west. Uh, so if you go on the western edge of the map, looking way over, you could see this area. It's a steeper area of ground over here. So, of course, they have the hillside combine working it. This is, I believe, one of the 6602 combines. I think this is one of my uncles in here, a very young man at that point. Um, now one of the owners, I believe, of, of Lone Oak. This would have been approximately taken in 1980, so we're talking a, an old picture. Um, I think they had just purchased the uh, 8820, so 40 years of farming between then and now, and they no longer have this machine. I think I showed a picture of this in a previous video, um, so it was a newer machine at that time. A little more commonly seen in the fields. There were more of them around back then. But now, I mean, it's extremely rare to see one of those machines uh, anywhere. I maybe have shown these before. I don't recall. Uh, the Lone Oak Tree, three combines. Oh, Grandpa always enjoyed trying to get a picture back in the day around his, his oak tree. This was one of those attempts. Kind of farming south of... Have I shown these pictures before? For some reason, they look very familiar. I just don't recall. I don't want to run everybody through them again. This one here, you know, also an old one with, uh, I know I've described a little bit, and again, I intend to have a video at some point that talks more about field burning and how it was done and why it was done and so forth and so on and I, I've explained some of that already but definitely when uh, you know when you have a, a big oak tree surrounded by a whole bunch of grass and it's all fluffy dry tinder dry stuff that will you know if so much as a cigarette butt got thrown out in here the whole field would go up well it being that it's kind of out in the middle you wanted to try to make sure it wasn't harmed and like I say, Grandpa, in the, the time era that he grew up in, well, let's just say he didn't have much use for a lot of what he would have called as, as tree huggers. You know, where, where there are folks heavily into preserving every tree. I mean, I think there are people out there that literally don't want a single tree cut down. They see that as anathema. Um... And, and you know what, I, I very much readily agree with this point. Uh, trees are such a wonderful, renewable resource um, for mankind to use um, as long as we, we practice good stewardship. You know, years and years ago, you know, it had even happened in this state also when the loggers came through, all those beautiful old growth trees that they had, we're talking the huge ones, five, six feet at the butt and, and bigger. Um they just raped and pillaged the land. They cut them down and nobody replanted. Well, that's horribly irresponsible. Now, those problems are long in the past. And then um, I've read some stats that we have more trees in the state now than it ever has had in its history. You know, and it's all being managed. We don't have a lot of the huge old growth trees anymore. Of course, a lot of them eventually die and end up on the ground anyways. But it's much better managed, and yet there's still people who uh, just disagree or whatever and would prefer no trees uh, get cut down. Now, I don't know what kind of homes these people live in. Um, they must use something other than toilet paper when they use a restroom. I don't know, but uh, it's one of those philosophies out there. And I know my grandfather didn't have much use for it, but let me tell you, he loved this oak tree. And... He did everything he could to ensure it wasn't harmed. And so a lot of times when we were burning around it, uh, one of the things we ha always had to do was to take care to backfire a little bit around the oak tree so that when we sent the whole field up, that it was already scorched around the area here. And as the fire raced up the hill, that it would leave the tree unharmed. You know, it, it gets smoked out uh, for certain. 
but uh, at least there would be enough backfire around it that it wouldn't damage or stunt the tree. And, you know, to my knowledge, in all my years up there and the number of times we burned around it, I don't ever recall seeing this oak tree anything other than lush green, except in the fall, you know, when the, the leaves would start to fall and they would turn colors and what have you. So point is, is a fire never harmed it. Um, so Grandpa always saw to it. And I think that's something they've continued even to this day. Uh, let's hop back in game and see kind of how we're doing. Yep, the harvest is continuing. Let's make sure old oh, Air's course play coming along behind us, right? There she is. And go back to my thing here. You know, I think I have shown some of these pictures before. Maybe I'll show this one again, just to show the size of some of the rocks that are in the area when they really get so large that you just leave them there. And these here, this again is in a field kind of off to the west of the map. And I apologize if I've shown these before, uh, but, but there's just a number of places, particularly on ridges, you know, right at the cusp of a tree, it must be some geological thing, and I can't articulate why, but I know there are several extremely large, oh, I don't even call them boulders. These are beyond the size of boulders. They're, they're not just in the hill, they are the hill. And I think some of these rocks are so massive that there's they haven't ever been able to get underneath them. You know, to be able to, when you go up to a rock and you've dug around it and you try to push on it with the biggest machine that you have and it doesn't budge, you know, you know, you've got something that, you know, may go clear to China for all, for all we know. So for years, they've just farmed around them and uh, evidently they're big enough. They've never been, they've never attempted to take them out with dynamite. Like I say, I have a feeling it would just leave a rocky crater. And if there's just more rock underneath it, why not at least leave this sitting above ground level so you can at least see the thing and know kind of where it is so you don't uh, bung up your, your machinery. So, like I say, we just farmed around it and made the best of it. I think a lot of times they would try to uh, spray around them so we could always see, see them easily enough. Um, give me one other one. Yeah, this was a steeper area down in another field. Again, far to, well, I say far, not the, at far, to the west of the Lone Oak map. There was some steep areas in there. Back in the day, there was a couple hillside uh, combines. Uh, I think this was Grandpa's. This must be a neighbor's one. I don't recognize it because it had a little bit different header set up, so I kind of think they were borrowing one from the neighbor's. Uh, who must have been done harvesting? Not sure why, but uh, but appears they were. Yeah, I've always just loved seeing a hillside combine work. Um, there are other ways to attack a hill. I know there's other manufacturers. It's horribly expensive to get a machine that levels side to side, let alone some of those that uh, you all use in Europe, you know, that do it fore and aft. But I don't know. At least to my pair of eyes, it's a beautiful thing to look out the field and see the uh, combine self-leveling around. All right, how's our fella doing here? Probably go, well, you know what, I'll just leave it here. I don't need to start up my wind rower. No need. That'll happen easily enough once we get a little bit further into this piece from... Uh, the harvest and it's just working away I, I know we're gonna make it before the rain hits but I find my I really wish how many minutes we had and my goodness who am I to complain I guess I just like knowing the time because you know looking at the forecast someone might say well eh, I just don't have enough time to start this field or there's no point in starting such and such, but if you knew down to the minute how long you had until the rain arrived, well then you can make uh, make use of the time. So 
I do know that this icon up here just turned from a little one to a big one. So, but I still don't know what that means. I think that means we have several hours, but rain is coming. And I'm hoping next time I will have the mod that, uh, that indicates uh, the time uh, that we have left until it hits. We jump onto our, our offloading here. Do it be carrying it down to storage. I kind of think wheat is at its low price point. Yes, it is. So we don't want to sell it now. I think we'll be selling at some point in the winter. Ditto with our grass seed. Although I know we sold some grass seed initially just to help pay some bills. That was maybe in the past day three, one. Maybe it's day one when we harvested it. I don't recall at this moment. Um, so... We kind of sold a little low point there. Next time we harvest, or the remaining of it, we'll try to sell it next spring. I don't even know if this is an accurate uh, depiction here. It's I created the graph when I set up grass seed as a crop. So you kind of got to pick something. Um, and so that's kind of what I picked, just that kind of profile, if you will. And you can see just by looking at the prices that it has, that it does better than say wheat by quite a long shot and I'm wondering even if I've made the price too rich um, maybe so I maybe need to dial that back a bit because we will make way more money on grass seed than we ever would on on wheat so but it is what it is wish there yeah. I wish there was a way to just come to the field and not have to go through the rigid uh, pathway that's set up for this, but I don't know that there's any other way to do it. Maybe somebody watching this will know, I've, I think I previously mentioned it, did Auto Drive as a mod exist in Farm Sim uh, 17? I know it came in at Farm Sim 19, and I used it there, but I don't know that it was a thing yet on, uh, on Farm Sim 17. Maybe it was, but I, I could be mistaken. I really enjoyed using it in 19. It was very handy to be able to create a network, you know, so you didn't have to specify individualized routes all the time. You know, no longer did I have to set up course plays going from the field to the point of storage for every single field. As long as I had the route set up in auto drive, it would go there. Then I would just use uh, course play in the field by itself, and it uh, it would handle it that way. It was really simple. But this works too. We're not highfalutin here. We have good help, and we just pay him well. Well, um, I'm a little before the end of the half hour, but I know there's some footage I wanted to tack on. It's stuff I took today. It's not Lone Oak, but it shows what would be taking place on a number of Lone Oak fields after the harvest. And since I don't have any footage of it happening on Lone Oak, I figured I'd at least show it to you some of the crews that come in and and work on the fields and make the bales that uh, that they bale up after harvest so i want to thank you all for joining me here um you all have a wonderful day and i will see you on the next one goodbye for now